Hi, I'm Pablo with Evo Fusion, and Solomon. And today we're here with John Potenza from Old School Grappling Catch Wrestling Association. Awesome. Well, we're really excited to talk to you. I know it's a new association that you're starting, and uh, it's for me it's really exciting. So I like to see new things start up, and I'm really excited about catch wrestling. So, um, what's the name of your regular school? So my regular school is Average Joe's MMA. We're up in Prescott, Arizona. Um, you can hit us, hit us up on Facebook at Average Joe's MMA or yeah, the website is AverageJoe'sMMA.com. Okay. And do you have a website yet for Old School Catch Wrestling? Old School Grappling, yep. Old School Grappling.com Old School Grappling. is our website for the Catch Wrestling Association. So you guys could always hit us up on Old School Grappling.com or Old School Grappling Catch Wrestling Association on Facebook. I'll put a link in the notes, of course. So once that's up and going, then everybody can just link over there. And uh, can we know a little bit about your pedigree? Yeah, so I've been doing catch wrestling for a long time now, a very long time. I've trained under some of the greatest, uh, Billy Robinson, living legend, no question about it. So I trained with him for a long time. I was one of only seven to become an affiliate, uh, assistant coach under Billy, which is a huge honor, a huge, just a, just a huge blessing. So uh, I've trained with him, and I've also trained with Eric Paulson since the late 80s, early 90s. So I've been under Eric Paulson, who's helped me tremendously with my catch game. Uh, it's been a couple of decades with him almost, so it's, it's been a pretty pretty good run. Wow. <laughs> okay. And uh, what is catch wrestling for people out there? Catch wrestling is precision violence. <laughs> it's brutality, pure and simple. Uh, no, it's it's catch wrestling is is wrestling based. It's we work everything from stand up to ground. The biggest difference we have between catch wrestling and a lot of other arts is we're allowed wrestling pins. So when we get our we got our shoulder blade to the mat, you got a pin, flat, a pinfall ends the match. There's also most of the time all submissions are in, so we have no no limits to leg locks, neck cranks, chokes, or whatever. It's usually all in, and uh, most matches are best two out of three falls, which is nice. It's different than a lot of other grappling arts where you might have a bad first outing, go out there, shoot, you know, try to shoot a double, get guillotined, and be done. When you catch, you might make that mistake and get a second second try. So you get the best of three matches is the overall winner of that actual match, which is a kind of unique thing to catch wrestling. Okay. So you train with Eric Paulson, so you've done some jiu-jitsu then, I'm assuming? I've never done Brazilian jiu-jitsu. No? Uh, no. Oh, okay. But I've done a lot of submission wrestling. Okay. Combat submission wrestling is Eric's thing. Although it has jiu-jitsu moves in it, it's still a wrestling based. Okay. Um, so I've done a lot of judo, black belt judo, and I've done a lot of different martial arts. Uh, but judo and catch wrestling are my primary grappling and combat submission wrestling are my primary ground art. Okay, awesome. Well, so the big question for me is it, because catch is a grappling art, right? How does that meld in with striking? Right? You mentioned Eric Paulson, he's a striker too. Absolutely. So, you know, how, how, does that, how does it balance it? So catch picks up where striking leaves off. So the tie-up's are perfect, uh, in my opinion, when you, if you go from striking and if you can get to a clinch, any kind of tie-up, now you're in the immediate comfort zone of catch wrestling. So any kind of, we go from striking to clinching, as soon as you make contact, now that's where the takedowns begin, the body locks begin, all the tie-ups. So it's a pretty seamless transition when it's done right from striking to catch wrestling. So is it better for MMA? In my opinion, I think it's excellent for MMA. Um, because it's such a, a takedown heavy and top control heavy art, it works perfectly for MMA because our goal is to get takedown, get top control, which is usually a lot easier to score in the judges' eyes and easier to score strikes and set up your submissions. Okay. So, bring back to the idea of, uh, of pinning, how does pinning change the game for things that don't involve pinning, like MMA or even self defense, right? So pinning is really good because even if you're if you're a catch wrestler working that works pins all times and you do an MMA bout or even a grappling bout, being able to control somebody enough to pin them and hold them in place can get you to set up for your whatever your finish is going to be, whether it's strikes or your next submission or whatever. Yeah. Do. do you think you should cross train some type of college wrestling if you're a catch wrestler? It is definitely beneficial to, to cross train wrestling. I mean, you know, just the, the mat time alone is well worth it. Just to get in there and work your takedowns, work your control positions, your pins, your escapes. That's all, you know, a okay. huge part of catch, so it's really good to cross train that. Okay, great. So, how would something like wrestling benefit somebody who's, say, smaller, like a woman, right? 
Yeah, it works well because it's all based on leverage. So mm -hmm. rather than trying to be force on force or being too passive in something, you can still be aggressive but use leverage to your advantage. So a lot of women or smaller frame people can work against the larger guy by utilizing that leverage and timing rather than just trying to muscle it in. There's a big misconception about catch and everybody says, oh, there's big muscle head guys, they're all you know, giant. And that, that comes partly in truth because back in the day, the cool catch guys were coal miners, iron workers, physical working guys that, that were working hard all day, so they were just big, strong guys. They would wrestle for fun after work, you know, it was their relaxed time. So that kind of translated over, and people think, oh, catch guys are all big and gigantic, but that's de definitely not the case. Catch is about leverage and precision. Okay. And, uh, so a lot of that stuff can be applied very well to self-defense to someone smaller. Awesome. So if you do BJJ, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, should you cross train catch? It depends on what your goals are, what your ultimate goal is. If you're if you're a purist and you want to stay traditional and obviously you stay there, but if you want to you know kind of expand a bit, I think it's a perfect mix. I think Jiu Jitsu guys benefit a lot from learning catch and vice versa, you know, because we have different ends of the spectrum. And jiu Jitsu guys are more comfortable on their backs, the catch guys are more comfortable on the top. So I think it's a really good balance for guys to be able to train back and forth and, and kind of pick each other's brains and see how things work together. So with a higher focus on takedowns, do you think it would be good for competition then? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Awesome. Speaking of multiple styles, right, there's some discrepancy between American and English catch. Yeah. So can you illuminate us <laughs> a little bit? So yeah, it's a, it's a crazy thing. It's kind of a touchy subject on some parts, but it's uh, the, the traditional Lancashire or English catch wrestling had its style, and the Americans at the time had a style called rough and tumble. Rough and tumble was basically brawling, is what it was. You know, punch, kick, eye gouge, pull hair, all that stuff. The English guys came over to America and started cross training with these rough and tumble guys, and they, they came up with a more aggressive style of catch. So the American style is a little more on the aggressive side as far as having some of that meaner stuff in it, but the Lancashire English side is where more of the tradition technical base came from. Okay, awesome. So we we hear a lot about um, the Japanese catch wrestlers like Sakuraba. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like they're a good representative of what catch is or do you think it's because because there's so much other stuff thrown in there that it's not? Uh, that's a tough one, but yeah, I think Sakuraba is a great representative just because of what he's accomplished. And 90, you know, 90 percent of the time, he's using pure catch when he fights. He does. Okay. He's cross trained over the years with other people and other styles, but the majority of his stuff is from our lineage of Billy Robinson's lineage. Okay. So it is. It, he's a huge. He's. I mean, he's been. I've been a fan of his since the beginning. It's awesome to watch yeah. a catch guy in there all the time against all these different styles and right. doing very well for the majority of the time. Okay. You know, well, you train with the legend. Uh, Billy Robinson. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that experience? It was painful. <laughs> it, was lot, it was very painful. A lot of, uh, a lot of pain. Anytime you'd hear him snicker before he did something, you knew you were going to get hurt really bad. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was a huge blessing. I, I was just very, very lucky to be blessed to be able to train with Billy. He's just a, a wealth of knowledge, just phenomenal. Okay. As you do stuff, you know, if you had a question about something, he could show you a hundred variations to it, just on the drop of a hat like that. Just amazing to have that kind of. Just knowledge base to go to and you know ask questions and stuff. Okay. Yeah, it was it was really great training with them. A lot of fun. And I've noticed that most of the catch people I've trained with and met seem really grumpy. Is that part of catch wrestling? <laughs> uh, I think that's just for being in pain all the time okay. <laughs> from the constant, you know, constantly getting twisted up. But uh, okay. yeah, I think these days people start to lighten up a little more. But a lot of the old timers were, were a lot more serious. Than yeah. The older guys are definitely more serious and more rough. Right. Uh, the newer generation, I think, is starting to lighten up a bit as far as having Josh, fun while doing it. Josh Burnett was serious as a heart attack at every second when I trained with him. So. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a very very skilled and very dangerous person. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah he's very very serious when he trains, uh, right. yeah, for the most part. Okay, can you just show us something to let people see what Catch is about? Yeah, absolutely, I'd love to. Uh, I'd like to show you, I work on a half halch, just a, a basic, a pretty traditional uh, takedown to Catch Wrestling. Okay. And I think it applies pretty well to pretty much anybody. Okay, great. Alright guys, so we're going to go into a half halch. Half halch takedown, we start from 50-50 tie up here. I'm going to go inside tie here. When I go inside tie, I open the window and slide the wrist control. Once I have his wrist control, I'm going to step to the side and stuff his head under my armpit that has his wrist. So here, I'm going to stuff his head here and pin his fist to his chest. Once his fist hits his chest, I go elbow to elbow, 
here, reach to his far hip. I step my foot inside. Once my foot goes inside, this hand goes from here to here. Goes to a chin strap, right? So I get here, I step, then I go to my chin strap, I turn and look. Here, once I get to my position, I hold him in, keep my body weight on, and bring my elbow up to my body here. And that's a neck crank. <laughs> That was amazing. <laughs> Alright, so uh, where are we at again? So, uh, Renaissance Wing Chun, Middle of Phoenix. Right. So, uh, middle of Phoenix. Middle of Phoenix. Find us on Facebook. The address is there. Perfect. <laughs> Alright, I really liked um, talking to John. He was really informative. Uh, really nice guy. Mm -hmm. um, the move he taught was really interesting. Uh, I think it's uh, kind of an uncommon move to see. So, it's going to be really interesting showing how I would think it would be used. You sure. Know? I like it from a self-defense perspective. So I could see a, a young lady um, being accosted, maybe, uh, maybe not punching at me, but reaching at me, grabbing at me, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, yeah. So you're trying to hold on to me. I mean, uh, yeah, you might grab me by the neck. You might, I think right by the arm yeah. is really common. Yeah. They, women always have bruises right there. Right. So I mean. It's so natural for women in our culture to do the unthinkable at this point, you know? Right. And so she's gonna drive that bad boy through. Right. You know what I'm saying? Grab the head right here and shoot the arm under, okay? Drop the guy and blaze. Yeah. And the reason why she wants you on the ground is that that half a second took you to get up. Right. You, you, ha you might chase me for a minute before the pain in your crotch. <laughs> and you might catch me. Yeah. And I may want you on the ground. I want you to be feeling that and then getting up. And hopefully by then I'm at a Circle K. I found a friend with a cell phone. Right. I got to my car. And maybe that's, maybe that's all the time we need. You know what I'm saying? So I see it as a great way just to get the guy down. I don't need to follow you down if I don't want to. Yeah. If ground game's my thing, maybe I want to. But right. I personally think you shouldn't. You should just let him fall and run. Yeah. Generally agree. Uh, from the, the MMA side of things, right? I, I find that because catch is so uncommon, right? Right. You get a lot of people that shoot with their head down. Yeah. They shoot for the legs with their head down. Whether they're coming from, you know, conventional wrestling or even just play football and don't have a better solution, right? <laughs> sure. It's, it's head down, shoulders forward, and I get that. Yeah. But in that position, right? Yeah. You've got the the move is there as long as you can sprawl and and stuff the takedown, right? Sure. Hell, even, even for the woman, right? Guy might actually be trying to hoist her up on his shoulder to carry her off somewhere. Walk right off to his... If I'm in this position, head. right, all you have to do is stuff my head, get your hand into my arm, yeah. turn right. and dump. I'm gonna carry you off to my white, no window van right now, hold on. Right? Getting in, and I'm just gonna go. Okay? Now granted, I have more body weight than most women. But nothing stop you from kicking me either. Right. And the thing's in that position. Good hard knee to the face. Sure. You know? Sure. It, it's really not I mean it, it high leverage, low strength use. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So, like from an MMA standpoint, um, we're across the ring from yeah. each other. Now, I want to keep space, so I'm gonna I'm gonna run my teeth, mm -hmm. right? Now I might fake teeth and bring you in. Uh -huh. At this point, I can run my half pouch. Absolutely. Ground and pound, done. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Who knows? Again, like you said, there are people who've been too far over. It's so common, it's ridiculous. But even if their posture is correct, it is possible to bend them over. Even if I'm here. When I sprawl, yeah. there we go. Mm -hmm. Now, we can half pouch. Right. Then over I go. Right. If you don't maintain that posture, if you're not trained to maintain that posture, it's gonna break. Right. So, yeah, and the, the funny thing is, I, I actually see variations on this type of move mm -hmm. in, in other arts. Uh, the the uh, common move, the 100% is actually similar. Mm -hmm. the, the grips are a little different and it works best like if you're pinned against the wall or something, but it's great sure. to get off the wall. Sure. Um, but in uh, like in Filipino martial arts, and I'm probably gonna butcher the term because I do not speak Filipino at all. Okay, yeah. It's like uh, like Puder Kapala, something like that. It's just yeah. head turning throw. Yeah. It's the same idea. I have the arm. I'm just not reaching over here. Yeah. And instead of holding you here, I'm actively pushing your head through. Same concept, right? Absolutely. But how often do you see people use that kind of thing? Right. right. It's, it's not very common. 
And because that takes a higher degree of control and dexterity, I think that the half halge is maybe just a little more functional because it's a more gross motor movement type idea. I'm seeing this on the wall, on the cage all the time in MMA. I'm seeing mm -hmm. people start this move. So, I mean, understanding it would really bring it to fruition. Yeah. Because I see them lift the arm and push the head. Mm -hmm. The half halge is right there, right. you know. So I know you're putting your body weight against me, but once I once I really crank you, I think you're gonna flip over. And if yeah. I don't wanna be there, I'm gonna jump out, get to the center of the ring, and we can start all over again. So, okay. Um, that pretty much covers my ideas on this move. I, I think we're covered. All right, man, thank you. Yeah. All right.